What happens when a popular YouTuber finds himself entangled in a relentless and escalating war with a dangerous convicted hacker? And to make matters worse, what happens when that said hacker obtains all his personal information through YouTube's disgustingly broken system? Well, you have an individual whose not only career is at risk, but also their and their family's life. For the last month and a half, I have had a stalker. And this stalker has done everything they can to try to destroy my life and my livelihood, which is my YouTube channel. I've received messages nearly every single hour for the last 35 days from this man. And now we're at the point where this man has placed four copyright strikes on my videos to get my channel terminated. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today, we'll be delving into the ongoing situation with Vince Vantage, a documentary-style YouTuber who is currently having his livelihood deconstructed by a vicious convicted hacker. But to fully understand how a seemingly innocent YouTuber can become such a target, we first need to go back to where it all began. Vince Vantage would join YouTube on the 24th of September 2020, where on the same day, he would publish his first video, titled, When Ashley Madison Screwed Over 29 Million Customers. The video was a solid start, as it laid the groundwork for the gripping content that would soon fill his channel. It's July 15th, 2015. Ashley Madison employees arrive at work, turn in their computers, and the lovely sound of thunderstrucks playing in the background. And then a message appears. Ashley Madison must shut down immediately, or else we will release all customer records, real names and addresses, and employee documents and emails. Welcome to your worst f***ing nightmare. The Impact team have just hacked into Ashley Madison, and they set a 30-day window for Ashley Madison to shut down, or else they would release all the information they had. Vince would go on to post a variety of videos, covering topics ranging from Bill Cosby to Jeffrey Epstein to Minecraft. With each and every upload, Vince would not only improve his presentation, but his ability to tell a captivating story. Over three years, Vince skyrocketed to a formidable presence online, amassing an audience of 480,000 subscribers and nearly 37 million views. Entering July 2023, Vince was seemingly at the pinnacle of his journey, but little did he or anyone else know, a video he had published later that month would change his trajectory forever. On the 25th of July 2023, Vince would publish a video to his channel titled, This Nerdy Teen is the FBI's Most Wanted Hacker. A group of teenagers, he had stolen a hundred million dollars from Epic Games, Valve, Microsoft, hell even the US military. And while the other teens were now locked up, Dylan had escaped to Poland, but now he was broke. But from a group of guys he had just met, he had heard the security cameras at the local Polish bank were pretty lax, enough to plan a robbery. The video would be a huge success, going on to gain over 2.5 million views within the first month. But whilst things seemed fine on the surface, everything was about to take a wild turn for the worse. During the video, Vince would discuss several hackers, one of whom is Sinet, who would plot to destroy Vince's career and livelihood. But why would this hacker decide to target Vince, especially considering the fact a story had been covered several times by other channels? Well, here's what Vince himself had to say. So when I was making this video, I saw that Sinet had done a interview about all of his crimes publicly on the Darknet Diaries podcast. Great podcast, nothing bad to say about him. So because he'd done that public interview, I messaged Sinet thinking that he'd be open to do an interview with me. And I sent him a really nice thing stating, hey, I'm just looking to pick your brain about some stuff. But Sinet tells me he doesn't want to do the interview and wants nothing to do with me, which is fine. I totally get it. He says he's turned down people who have made docu-series on Netflix, okay, whatever. But then Sinet starts telling me that I should move on from this story, that I probably shouldn't even make this video because everyone wants to forget about it. So I tell Sinet, hey man, I understand where you're coming from, and that's it at the end of the day. I don't I don't say anything beyond that. If the interaction between Vince and Sinet had simply ended here, you wouldn't think much of it. But this is just the beginning of a long and exhausting saga. As Vince began work on the video, this is what happened. So Sinet never responds back to my message and I get working on the video. The, the story of the Xbox Underground, his story has been told thousands of times. So I'm gonna tell it in my own way. So two months later, I published my video on July 25th, 2023. And the video's a one out of 10, it's doing really well. I'm really proud of it. But then two days later, after not talking to Sinet for about, maybe about two months, I start to receive all of these threats from Sinet on Twitter. And he says, yo, that video got me feeling some way about you right now as a person. You proved all you care about is views. That's why you never got the time of day. So I ignore the message, whatever, he's upset with it. The story's been told a thousand times. Receiving negative feedback on a video is common, 
But what would happen next would break the barrier of a normal response and cross the line of harassment. So on July 28th is when the harassment starts, this sophisticated stalking campaign. He's calling it piece of scum, telling me I shouldn't be a YouTuber, and he's sending me tweets every single hour all through the night, telling me, Vince, I believe that was nice when I said I wanted to leave it all behind, to claim to understand that and still make a video as well. All because I told him in that original message I sent him that I understand why he's declining. I never said I understand and I'm not gonna do the video, but that's what he thinks. So he continues on about a piece of shit, story chaser, leave me alone. With Sinet not receiving much of a reaction from Vince, you may think he would simply give up and go back to living his life as usual. But no, instead, Sinet would up the ante and opted to try and get more other dangerous individuals involved too. And then he sends me a private message. Now this is interesting. Sinet tells me, the scene is made of wear and I'll be posting my personal email in the video. Now the scene is the hacking scene. So pretty much it's a soft handed threat that uh, I should be shitting bricks because they are gonna come after me. So mind you, I'm not responding back to any of this. And then he starts posting on my Twitter account, what Vince Vintage is no different than a creeper who fondled the female when she says no. Sinet is not very good at typing. So now he's calling me like a sex pest at this point because I made a video that he didn't want me. And then he tells me to eat shit. And then at 6.20 a.m., Sinet's posting all night long. Think about it, all night long he's just thinking about this. He says, Vince Vintage, don't worry. Wait for my YouTube comment. Basically making an underhanded threat that something would happen through YouTube, but I don't know what it is. Now at 6.32 a.m., he sends me a private message. The whole scene is laughing at you basically talking about the hacking scene. Another soft-handed threat that the hacking scene would destroy my life. And all of this, I just ignore. As the constant harassment and waves of emails and tweets ensued, Vince quickly grew tired and eventually decided to try and de-escalate the situation by blocking Sinet. But what seemed to be the right move at the time would ultimately end in disaster as the hacker would find other ways of getting Vince's attention. So the next day, July 29th, after I see Sinet tweeted me all fucking morning, I block him at 10.30 on July 29, 2003 on everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. And then 93 minutes after blocking him, I get a DMCA claim on the video that he was trying to get me to take down by an Adam Chester. Now, Adam Chester provided an email, adamchester3 at protonmail.com, which if you don't know, ProtonMail is notoriously used by hackers to hide their identity, which Sinet pleaded guilty to hacking into the US government. The timing of Adam Chester copyright striking my video was very suspicious after Sinet had harassed me over 13 hours nonstop. So I emailed YouTube's copyright team and then I emailed Adam Chester to find out like what these claims were. Because this video that was doing so well is taken down and I'm extremely upset at this point. So at 4.17 a.m., the same time that Sinet was consistently harassing me, Adam Chester responded to my email asking what these copyright infringements were. And he said, I'll have to check on that, but I'm traveling. Though I remember it was for multiple copyright infringements. As far as I remember, there were multiple other videos on your channel which violate my copyrights. But for now, I have not filed those strikes since three strikes in 90 days leads to your channel getting banned. Just be careful in future videos. Have a good weekend. So Adam Chester can't tell me what these copyrighted infringements were on every single video on my channel that could lead to my channel getting banned. He's given me a soft-handed threat that if I don't remove this video, he's gonna go through and strike more videos on my channel to give me more of a hard time to try to terminate my shit. With the copyright claim now being falsely launched towards Vince, things would only escalate from here, as Vince was forced into using YouTube's horribly broken system to try and defend himself and his work. Here's the fucking gnarliest part of all of this. Now, when you get a copyright strike on your video, the YouTuber, you could file a counterclaim against that strike. And it basically states that, no, this actually wasn't copyrighted material. It's fair use. You make your argument. But when you send that counter notification, you have to put your legal name, your legal address, your phone number, all of that information. So when they file the lawsuit, if they do, they know where to send it to. Now, I knew that Sinet was using this copyright claim system to not only screw with me by not having the video up, but also trying to obtain my real information to dox and swap me. So I hire an attorney at this point to legally represent me 
onto the counterclaim because I knew Sinet was trying to do this to fuck with me. So I'm like, I got an attorney, everything's gonna be all good, this guy won't know my name. So I put the attorney's name, all of their info on the counterclaim, we fill out the form, we send it out to YouTube. But YouTube does not accept the form with my attorney's name on it. YouTube says that I have to provide my legal name tied to my AdSense account. Although the person filing the copyright takedown has to provide no identification, no proof of anything about their fucking identity. So I have to show my full government name to this convicted hacker to file this counterclaim to get my video back up. That shit's so fucked up to me. So I filed the counterclaim with my, my legal name, but my attorney's email, address, phone number, and YouTube finally accepts the claim. And basically, the attorney wrote up this thing about all of the copyright violations and why they were BS. Adam Chester, Sinet, was saying that a ABC7 news clip was actually his that I used on my video. So we just sent the actual clip of the ABC7 from YouTube and being like, no, this is their clip, not Adam Chester. Adam Chester had no registered trademarks or copyrights to any of that stuff in the footage. So the whole thing was just BS right. Following Vince's counter notification, the situation would only continue to escalate. So after I filed a counterclaim that Adam Chester, which is Sinet, gets a copy of, Sinet leaves a tweet directed at me, even though I blocked him on Twitter. And he says, at least he was man enough to pull down the video. However, he was still a bitch. Instead of saying sorry, he pulls the video down and blocks me. How can someone be so asinine is beyond me. So Sinet's playing dumb here. Oh, oh, at least he was man enough to pull down the video, but he's still a bitch. Whatever. We'll see a lot more of this in the future. So now it's August 1st, 2023. I have Sinet blocked on Twitter. But then he goes around, he starts tweeting publicly that whoever Adam Chester is, I'm gonna find him and strengthen the claim. He stole lines from Jack Reciter, the Darknet Diaries podcast, and provides no evidence for what lines I stole. Now, what's super interesting about this is that Sinet knows Adam Chester took down the video. Now, when a video is taken down for a copyright strike, it is delisted from YouTube. It cannot be searched, it isn't even shown in my channel. So how would Sinet possibly know that Adam Chester was the guy that made the claim? Hmm. Well, I think Adam Chester is Sinet. So at this point, I contact YouTube support and several partner managers, and I to lay out all of the harassment, I have all of the tweets, the messages, the BS, the MCA claims, and YouTube tells me we can't do anything about it. You just have to go through the system. Vince was quickly growing tired of the situation, and on the 10th of August, he would finally unblock Sinet. The next day on August 10th, I don't want to live my life in fear anymore. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to block this guy like a little bitch. I'm just going to unblock him and just be free. So Sinet sends me private messages 23 minutes after unblocking him. This guy is checking my Twitter non-stop every day every minute to see if I unblocked him. And 23 minutes later, he begins sending me a barrage of messages. He says, I see you unblocked me, why? Also, FYI, I don't know who Adam Chester is. How would you know? No one can see the video. How would you know who Adam Chester is? Oh, because you are him. Then he says, however, I did have the one on archive removed personally. I don't lie, and I say things for what they are. Now, this didn't make sense for a long time, until yesterday. Now, when the video was taken down from YouTube, one of my amazing subscribers took my video and they re-uploaded it on the archive.org for others to watch because you couldn't watch the original on YouTube. Following the video being uploaded to archive.org, it would be mysteriously taken down from the platform, where Vince would once again receive a DM from the hacker. So that video, I checked it recently, and it was gone for a DMCA copyright strike claim. And Sinet, in this message, is telling me that he removed it. So he removed the archive.org one, but he had, oh, he had nothing to do with my YouTube channel one. Fucking sure, bro. And then he continues to say, With all honesty, Adam Chester could be one of Nathan or Anthony's friends. No offense, but that video was a bit hurtful. So I don't respond to Sinet's message. And then at 3.18 a.m., you know, Sinet's normal operating time, he sends me two more private messages on Twitter. Following this, Vince realized the situation was possibly putting himself and his family at risk. So with that in mind, he decided to take further steps to fully explore just what type of person he was dealing with. 
So I hire a private investigator to do a full comprehensive background check on Sinet because I wanted to find out, could I file a restraining order against them? Could I file a cease and desist? Could I file a false or uh, fake DMCA lawsuit against them? Does Sinet have any gun permits? Had he committed any violent crimes? And where does he live? Because I don't know what this guy is capable of. So the private investigator sends me a report that is 160 pages long about everything in his life. That Sinet is 37 years old, has no job. He lived at his mom's house and he just moved into his uncle's apartment that he lives in for free. And that he had tried to commit suicide the year before. Now normally I wouldn't bring that up. But we're talking about Sinet having nothing left to lose and all of the time in the world to just fucking harass me. As the situation grew, it was no longer simply a false copyright dispute. By now, Vince recognized the sheer depth of Sinet's desperation and recklessness, fully grasping the magnitude of the danger he now faced. And to make matters worse, YouTube handed over Vince's full legal name. Now because my legal name was given to Adam Chester, who was Sinet, Sinet, a hacker who pled guilty into hacking into the US fucking government, begins harassing my fiance. Sinet had found my fiance's phone number and began texting her, pretending to be fucking me. Now, because I had Sinet's full background check at this point, I am freaking the fuck out. And I know exactly where he lives. I knew that the area code of this random number that texts my fiance, well, it's the same area code that Sinet lives at. What are the odds? Now, let me just give you some facts. My fiance is a school teacher. She doesn't, we've been together for 10 years. She has never had random numbers message her like this. So to have this happen from the same area code, the phone number, all out of the blue, while Sinet's been harassing me for the last month and a half, it's a little weird. Now that the hacker was intruding into Vince's personal life, he would have no choice but to take further actions, to not only now protect himself, but to protect his loved ones from the mess he was currently entangled in. At this point, I knew that Sinet was, he was stalking me. It was, it was straight up stalking me. I don't know what the fuck this guy was capable of. So me and my fiance move out of her home. We move the fuck out because I don't know that this guy that fucking hacked into the government, what, what the fuck is he gonna do? Because YouTube forced me to give my fucking name to him. This is what's going on in my life. And what, just keep in mind, this all stemmed from me asking for an interview. Now, days later on August 21st, my video that was copyright strike goes back up. And while my video was put back online, it was reset in the algorithm, basically just hurting me financially at this point. And while I did feel happy the video was backed up, I knew in the back of my head that Sinet was gonna copyright strike another video. Would it be the same one? Would it be a different one? I kept checking my YouTube studio every 30 minutes. I, I literally could not sleep. I just knew Sinet was gonna get enraged and just copyright strike more videos and just trying to get me to fucking delete that video. Vince's intuition would turn into reality, as the vicious hacker would take it upon himself to try and remove Vince's channel from the internet entirely. And that's exactly what happened. So just a couple days later, I get another strike on one of my biggest videos of all time. And the copyright holder, the claimant in this one, was Jake Turner. Now, Jake Turner didn't have a Google account either. He had, once again, a ProtonMail account. JakeTurner91 at ProtonMail.com. Now, let me be clear, ProtonMail is super niche. No one uses it. So why would it be two people that both have copyright claims against all of my videos happen to also have the same super niche hacker email service. What are the odds of that? So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know what? He wants to play this game. Let's do it. So now it's not Adam Chester. No, it is Jake Turner now fucking with me. Now I'm on the phone with the attorney the next day and I'm about to prepare a cease and desist against the net because I don't know what else to fucking do. I've tried going through YouTube. I tried doing all this shit and just nothing's getting done. And then I get another strike on my one of my biggest videos of all time. And I'm like devastated at this point. I'm like, I have two strikes on two videos. If I get one more of these from this fucking piece of shit filth, my channel's done. So I'm like freaking out. I don't know what to do. I call the attorney again. And then I get a third strike on my channel. Everything that I've built over the past three years is about to be gone in 90 days now. All because a 37-year-old piece of shit, low-life loser, 
who has nothing better to fucking do, just wants it down and doesn't have to prove anything about it. From this point onwards, Vince was taking the offensive as he began to do everything legally in his power to fight back against a degenerate hacker. I was so fucking mad when I got that third strike that I fucking threw my phone at the fucking wall. I was so fucking mad. I've been dealing with this for over a month and a half. You know, YouTube's consistently told me just file the counterclaim, wait 10 days. But the problem is when my next video goes up, it's gonna be copyright struck like that and the video's gone. And then it's I gotta wait 10 days and then it restarts in the algorithm and then now it's fucking with my money. Like, Sinet, if you wanna continue doing this, oh boy, you do not fucking know what is coming after you. I've already filed a fucking FBI report against your ass. I've already hired a private investigator to find out where you fucking live. I've already hired a cyber litigation stalking fucking firm to protect myself against your creepy ass. And a copyright attorney unless you want to pull any shysty shit like that. Do not fuck with me. I will fuck with you so much harder than you ever could fucking dream. You thought the bar of soap in the prison was bad? Oh, fuck. You don't know what the fuck's coming for your ass. And I told you to stop multiple times and you continue to do this. And I tried handling this privately, but just like a big fucking cockroach, sometimes you gotta pull back the curtain and shine the light on it to get it to scatter up with the wall. Following this, the video Vince published would go completely viral, garnering over 1 million views within three days, and the attention of not only just the entire YouTube community, but massive figureheads such as Penguin Zero, aka Most Critical, or Charlie, who would share the worrying situation with his audience. I'm sure a lot of you saw this earlier today, but this is a fucking awful situation. His name's Vince Vintage, and today he released a video today going over a really unfortunate situation where someone's abusing some internal YouTube systems in order to stalk and ruin his career. So this was his plea to try and get some eyes on it because YouTube has been ignoring it. I don't know how they can continue to ignore it with all the overwhelming evidence Vince has here, but I'm sure they won't be able to ignore it for much longer with all of the traction this got, especially with all the people sending it to like YouTube themselves. Like I send it to my YouTube guy to hopefully f forward it up the chain because it should only take a human being two minutes to realize that this whole situation is complete baloney and what's happening to Vince is legitimately illegal. With Charlie, alongside several other creators and viewers contacting YouTube, Vince would see the light at the end of the tunnel, when suddenly, YouTube would step forward and remove the false copyright strikes and claims, freeing Vince from what felt like an ever-escalating nightmare. Vince's personal safety is still in question, but on the bright side, Vince emerged as a beacon of resilience, captivating the YouTube community at large. This would result in Vince gaining over 60,000 subscribers within less than a week. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing.